Hi, in this video we're going to look a little bit at interpreting the derivative of a vector valued function. So the first thing I'm going to do here is write down the definition of the derivative and I'm going to do this uh, for the derivative at a specific value of t, so r prime of a. So you should practice writing this down. Uh, this is something you should be able to write down from memory. Okay, and that shouldn't be too much of a stretch if you remember the definition of the derivative from calculus one for an ordinary real valued function. So what we want to think a little bit about here is the geometry of what this limit actually means. So I'm going to draw a picture of a curve and I'm just going to draw a two dimensional curve. So I drew a little xy coordinate system over there and I'm just going to draw some curve and I'm going to give it an orientation here. So I want to think about the r of a first of all that's in the definition here r of a so that would be a vector uh, when I input t equals a and the terminal point of that vector uh, is a point along the curve so r of a would be that vector there. And then when I think about uh, this limit for the derivative, I need to think about both when h is greater than zero and h is less than zero. I'm going to start on my picture here by thinking about when h is bigger than zero and draw an r of a plus h. So that would be another vector whose terminal point is on the curve. Uh, and if h is bigger than zero, then that vector is going to be a little farther along the curve in the direction of the orientation than my initial vector r of a was. So there would be r of a plus h where h is bigger than zero. And so then when I think about subtracting those two vectors, uh, there are a couple different ways you might think about the geometry of subtracting two vectors. But one way you can do that is to put them tail to tail like we have here and then draw a vector that goes between the terminal points of those two vectors. So this little vector that I drew here, that I just drew right there, is one way to think about geometrically r of a plus h minus r of a. So you can do r of a plus h and then do r of a in the negative direction and draw that vector. If you did that, you'd end up with something like this, but that would be the same vector if I drew it here with its tail at the origin versus if I drew it right here between those two vectors. Uh, so r of a plus h minus r of a right there. And then if I think about dividing through by h or multiplying through by 1 over h, really that just gives me a scalar multiple of this same vector that I already drew. So I might have a longer or shorter vector depending on how big or small h was, but it would be in the same direction. And if h is positive, so for this picture we assume that h was going to be positive, then the vector would be pointing in the same direction, but it might be longer or shorter. So I just drew a little longer one there. If I divide by a very small value of h, then that's going to be like multiplying by a large number. So that purple vector I drew there, r of a plus h minus r of a all over h. Okay, and then if I take the limit as h approaches zero, there are two things that, that are going to happen when I do that. One is that this second vector, that terminal point on that second vector will be closer and closer and closer to my terminal point from that first vector. So the difference between those two vectors will be a smaller and smaller vector there. The other thing that will happen though is that I'm going to be dividing by a smaller and smaller value of h. So when I do that it'll be the same as multiplying by a larger and larger value of h. And so provided that limit exists, those two things kind of have to balance each other out. That the difference between the two vectors is getting smaller and smaller, but the scalar that I'm multiplying by is stretching that vector more and more. So as you do that, you can imagine the second point coming in, uh, the difference between those vectors getting smaller and smaller, and eventually I end up with a vector that is a limiting value. So I drew that there in kind of that bright turquoise color there to indicate that. All right, so that would be a picture if h is larger than zero. I should probably also think about if h is smaller than zero. I'm just going to draw a little smaller picture down here, kind of similar shape. In that case, my r of a vector, uh, wherever that would be, 
if h is less than zero, my r of a plus h would have been before that vector. And you can use the orientation on the curve to think about where it would have been before. And then when I subtract the two vectors, I'm going to get a vector that points in the opposite direction from what I did before. But then when I multiply through by 1 over h, remembering that h is negative, that's going to turn around the direction of that vector. So I will still get a vector pointing in the same direction as that purple vector that I drew in the first picture. Uh, so r of a plus h minus r of a all over h when h is negative. And then again, when I take that limit as h approaches zero, uh, the second vector gets closer and closer to the first one, but I'm also multiplying by the reciprocal of a very small scalar. So I end up with a limiting value there and a vector that represents the limit of that. So in either case here, uh, you can see geometrically that one of the things this represents is that we get a vector tangent to the curve C at the terminal point of R of A. So when you draw that, remember to draw that derivative vector with its tail on the curve and its tail should be at the terminal point of R of A on the curve. So you've got this tangency relationship. That shouldn't be a surprise if you think about derivatives in Calculus 1 and the, the relationship between the derivative uh, of a function and the tangent line to a curve. All right, another important application is in terms of motion. So uh, if we think about t perhaps representing time since an object started in motion, then we might think about r of t as representing the position of the object at time t. All right, so then thinking about what dr dt would represent, so the derivative of that position with respect to time, so that would represent a rate of change of position with respect to time, or we often denote that v of t for velocity. That's what velocity is, rate of change of position with respect to time. And when you sketch that velocity vector, you're always going to sketch that with its tail on the curve and it should be tangent to the curve. The curve would represent the path of the object. All right, uh, so velocity is rate of change of position with respect to time. If I really just want to know how fast or slow something's moving, then really what we're talking about is speed. Speed would be the magnitude of the velocity vector. And so that's a scalar quantity. Um, if I think about the derivative of the velocity vector with respect to time, or that would be the second derivative of the position vector with respect to time, then rate of change of velocity with respect to time would be acceleration. And the acceleration vector is also usually drawn with its tail on the curve um, because velocity and acceleration are describing something that's happening to the object or how the object's moving when it is at a particular point. Uh, it really makes sense to draw those two vectors from the point where the object is at. So that would be the point on the curve where you draw that. Um, all right, so in the next video we're going to look at an example of drawing a curve uh, in three space and the position, velocity, and acceleration vectors at a particular time.